Well, last week's video was a little bit epic. So this week we're doing something that's not going to take me six hours to edit. Um, we're going back to the to the knee, and we're just doing the patella because the knee's cool, right? What does it do? Why is it there? Is it just a bone within a tendon or is it a bit more interesting than that? What sort of shapey bits does it have? How long can I possibly talk about the patella, right? Right, the patella. I actually, I had one, I had one kicking around my office. Um, <laughs> I 3D printed one out. I'm trying to remember why have I got a 3D printed patella floating around my office and why is it black? I was actually printing out like a femur, um, so distal femur, proximal tibia, a bit of patella. We were making making joints that we could play with and uh, make ligaments and that sort of thing. So this is a right patella. Quadriceps femoris, the big anterior muscle of the thigh, crosses the knee. So its major role is in extending the knee joint, straightening the knee joint out. So when you're kicking a ball, that sort of thing, when you're standing up again. Uh, and it's a massive muscle, um, and we've looked at it up here, and it crosses the knee joint, and it inserts into the tibia. And there's a little lump there, and you can, you can feel that lump on yourself, and that's the tibial tuberosity. So your shin bone is the tibia, and a little lumpy bit here is a is a like, tuberous bit, lumpy bit, the tibial tuberosity, and the quadriceps femoris muscle is taking all of this muscle bulk across the knee and then inserting into the bone there. So what does the patella do? Well, the patella is within the tendon of that muscle. Huge muscle, initially a very huge tendon, but a much narrower, skinnier tendon down there that has to transmit a huge amount of force. So the patella is what's known as a sesamoid bone. Um, a sesamoid bone is a bone that tends to form within a tendon. We have some in our feet. They tend to be a little bit variable in their development. Um, they're called sesamoid after sesame seeds, the ancient Greek for sesame seeds. Um, and as I talked about when we talked about, what were we talking about? We were talking about ligaments in the knee, weren't we? And um, the bit, the, so the connective tissue between the patella and the tibial tuberosity gets called the patella ligament. But some people might call it the patella tendon. Now, your, your typical dictionary definition of a ligament is a, you know, a, a connective tissue between two bones, which is why this gets called a ligament. And that's fine. But if you were to look at the biology of the, of the connective tissue in here in the cells and the collagen and how it's organized and what's going on in there, it's much more tendon-like. It's a tendon, really. So it's a patella tendon. So really, we've got quadriceps femoris coming together as a tendon at the patella and inserting here. So really, this is the patella tendon. So if you take the patella, the bone, out of the, um, the tendon, this is what it looks like. Let's say this is the right side, but um, it has a pointy apex inferiorly, which makes sense, right? Because the, the distal tendon is narrower. This gets called the base up here. This is the wider part. I'm sorry it's black, but I, it's what I had. The base is superiorly, so the base is wide. That makes sense because you've got vastus lateralis and intermedius and rectus femoris and vastus medialis, the four muscular parts of quadriceps femoris need to attach to it. Um, but then the posterior surface, is definitely shaped. It's, it's skinnier laterally, so it's very thin laterally, but it gets quite thick in the middle. So we've got two facets, right? We've got two facets, for, and, then, and then there's a ridge in the midline. Now the reason that's there is, is because um, as we, as we um, flex and extend the knee joint, the patella, it stays in position, right? Because this tendon isn't getting any longer or shorter, but relative to the femur, it's moving. So it tracks up and down this patellofemoral groove here. This is a right knee because there's the fibula laterally. This is medial. So that's the same as my 3D print. So this is the 
the lateral condyle and the medial condyle of the femur here and there's a groove and the shape is such that the the patella will track up and down here and should stay within the groove now on the patella there's that thickened ridge in the middle uh, this is lateral so that's the lateral facet and that's the medial facet so the the patellofemoral groove here you can see it's covered in articular cartilage we need a lot of articular cartilage in the knee because as the femur spins around here it's it's moving quite a long way but this articular cartilage here is for articulating with the patella so the patella itself also has articular cartilage on the posterior surface so it has it's very good at moving which is great when you're walking because you're doing this all the time right and when you're cycling as well so it's not just a sesamoid bone it is a little bit special it's shaped to fit in the groove and it also has articular cartilage so that movement is nice and smooth Functionally, its, its main function then is to give, well actually it's got two main functions. Um, you might consider its main function to be to, uh, when quadriceps femoris contracts across the knee by pushing the tendon away from the joint, it gives the muscle a mechanical advantage in extension of the knee. That could be its major role. Its other major role is that it protects the knee joint. So when you're kneeling, particularly when, right? So particularly when the knee is flexed, look how exposed, right? Look how exposed all of that stuff is when the knee is flexed. So the patella then is protecting the knee joint when the knee is flexed. Both of those roles are important. And I said that normally um, the patella moves up and down the patella groove. This does depend a little bit upon the quadriceps femoris muscle. This is vastus medialis medially. This is a left leg, that's medial. Uh, vastus lateralis. They're going to pull on the patella in two different directions. Rectus femoris and deep to it, vastus intermedius, uh, are going to pull down the middle, they attach to the base there. Um, but if vastus lateralis becomes stronger, then it can pull the patella laterally, right? Um, now, most dislocations of the patella, and by dislocation of the patella we mean that it slips out of its groove. If the patella slips out of its groove, it tends to do so laterally, and it could be because of an imbalance between the two muscles there. It's incredibly painful, it's incredibly debilitating for this joint. You're basically gonna sit there and get carried to hospital and somebody's gonna fix you. you know, it's usually an ambulance job or something like that. Very, very, very painful. Um, but, because of course the posterior surface of the patella is covered in articular cartilage and it's running through that patellofemoral groove, patellofemoral groove that's also got articular cartilage if there's an imbalance between these parts of quadriceps femoris and if the the patella gets pulled to one side then it can be quite painful so it can, you can get knee pain because say vastus lateralis is tighter than this side and is pulling the patella a little bit laterally putting a little bit more force on the lateral side of the groove so you get you get some knee pain the iliotibial band can do something similar stretch your quads that pain may go away and another consideration that we have to think about there is the q angle so the q angle yeah, it's called the q angle because it's related to quadriceps and what we've got here is can you see how can you see the whole leg? You can, just the back, can't you? Right, but there's the patella, and the direction of pull of quadriceps is probably along this line here, if all things are good, if your quadriceps are working okay. But the angle of the femur is actually like that, right? If you notice how I frame this to get his head in, and he's, he's like way taller than me, so. <laughs> it's difficult to frame, it needs to be shorter. Come on, this room's big enough. Ooh. <laughs> the room's just about big enough. So, can you, ooh. He's, it's told you he was tall, right? So do you see how the, the shaft of the femur, the diaphysis of the femur is running at that angle, whereas the pull of quadriceps should be along this angle, 
or this direction, right? So that line versus that line, the angle formed down here gets called the Q angle. So to measure the Q angle, you, you draw a line from the anterior superior iliac spine down to the center of the patella, and you draw another line from the center of the patella down to the tibial tuberosity, right? So the direction the patella ligament takes. And those two lines are not gonna be in line with each other. They're gonna be slightly off. Uh, and what you've got, the difference between the two then, is your Q angle. And the Q angle is an estimate of the direction of pull of quadriceps. And if the pull is more lateral for a number of reasons, like the, the bony features that we see here, which the muscles attach to, um, then there's a greater risk of the patella being pulled laterally and laterally out of it, patellofemoral groove and stuff like that, all right? Back in the day, back when I was, well, back when I started cycling um, some years ago, we were using toe clips. Um, this was like the, the end of the toe clips era. And chondromalacia patella was an issue. Um, so with the repetitive action of cycling, of course, we're really using our quadriceps a lot. The, um, the, the, the articular cartilage on the posterior surface of the patella would soften uh, and given time would degenerate. And you get this, you, you can get osteoarthritis here causing the same sort of thing. Chondromalacia patella. And that was caused by the foot being held rigid by the toe clips, because we had cleats underneath as well. Um, and affecting the tracking of the patella in the groove, causing abnormal biomechanical loads and wear and tear and damage and pain, right? Um, all of that went away when clipless pedals were introduced, you know, SPDs and look pedals and that sort of thing, because you clip into your pedal now, like ski bindings, and you've got a little bit of movement. Your foot can move a little bit as you make the pedal stroke, and because your foot can move a little bit, it means that we're not forced into an unnatural movement or too unnatural a movement and the patella tracks within the groove and everything's cool. Good, eh? Good invention, that. There are a few bursi around here. Um, there are infrapatella fat pads, which you can probably palpate. Um, maybe either side of the patella tendon, but that's about it for the patella. So it's shape, it's flat anteriorly, it's got a wedge posteriorly, a bit of a triangular cross section, so it sits in the groove and it moves up and down the groove and the movement up and down the groove is dependent upon this, the parts of this muscle being nicely balanced and your Q angle and stuff and um, tendon and all that. All right, nice. The patella, short. Ah, why can't I make all my videos nice and short? Because I like to ramble on, isn't it? Right, see you guys next week. <laughs>